And we're rolling. Good morning, friends. Actually, it's good evening. Kevin and I are here with some of our really close friends. This is Debbie and Peter Timbers. Debbie's in RCIA right now, and Peter's been a member of our parish for how many years now? Four and a half. Four and a half years. So they've been pretty involved in St. Pat's. You've probably seen their boys. They have five boys, um, all sorts of ages. They serve a lot. They're pretty involved in the parish. So it's really fun for Kevin and I to be here with uh, Peter and Debbie tonight to talk a little bit about this week's readings. But before we jump in, Kevin, you want to start us with a prayer? Please. Awesome. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Gracious God, we just thank you for our Savior, Jesus Christ, O Lord. We thank you for the power that you restored back in us, O Lord. We thank you for the Holy Spirit in our lives, O Lord, to give us the wisdom and an understanding of what this whole season is all about, O Lord. We come before you tonight, O Lord, wanting to seek you deeper in understanding, O Lord. We want to come before you tonight, O Lord, and just to clarify some of those things that you are that we're seeking about in our lives, O Lord, to help better understanding. So we just ask you to send the Holy Spirit in and among us tonight, O Lord, as we kind of just seek out more and understand you more. And we ask this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Beautiful. So a thing happened last week. I'm not sure if you guys were aware, but we went through the Easter seasons. We had the Easter tridu Triduum, and then we had Easter Sunday. It was a little different this year. How did you guys feel about Easter? It was a little disappointing. Um, I am in RCIA, and I was looking forward to joining the church. I was been waiting and wanting Eucharist for years, and so that was hugely disappointing. Um, but I firmly believe God has a plan and a purpose for this timing. I don't know what in the world it is, but I've waited this long, and I guess I can keep waiting. <laughs> Peter, how about for you? I was, I was, um, I was disappointed. Uh, we have, I, I have this. Uh, uh, five years ago, when I started to come back into the church, mm -hmm. um, I, I recognized that I wanted to receive Eucharist with my wife. And um, so I was, I was really looking forward to commencing that, that portion of our marriage. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it's, 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 uh, it's kind of sad. Yes, it yeah. is. But it's going to be glorious when that day comes, and it will come, I promise you. Amen. So if you're feeling a little bit sad, a little bit disappointed, a little bit underwhelmed maybe with Easter this year, that's okay. You're not alone. Um, I think we're all right there in that same boat with you. It's, it's been really hard. But we've entered the Easter season. We know that Christ has risen, and this week's Gospels are really pretty special. This week's Gospel reading comes from John, um, and it's it's pretty impactful. Peter, start off by telling us a little bit about what was the most impactful, maybe the most heart-punching part of this Gospel reading. Oh, absolutely. Um, so uh, this week's Gospel reading is uh, the 20th chapter of John, verses 19. I think it goes all the way to 31. Mm -hmm. Um, just by way of background, uh, I'm a revert to the faith. I was, yes. a, I was a baptized Catholic who uh, foolishly walked away. And, um, and so prior to coming back into the church, I was about 20 years an evangelical, mm -hmm. non-denominational Baptist mm -hmm. type of Christian. And so um, sacraments are, 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 are new and exciting. So for me, in this one of the most important things that happens happens right around um, in the 20th chapter Jesus says peace be with you uh, at verse 20 he says when he said this he showed them his hands and his side the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord Jesus said to them again peace be with you as the father has sent me so I send you and when he see when he said this he breathed on them and said to them receive the Holy Spirit whose sins you forgive are forgiven them and whose sins you retain are retained. So that to me is um, super important as a Christian because what that says is the disciples were given the authority by Christ himself who had the authority of God to allow these men to forgive sins, to wash you clean um, through the Holy Spirit. And that's a grace. That's a grace that I don't. I, unfortunately, our non our non Catholic 
Christians in this country, the exception being, I guess, the Orthodox, don't have. They don't have access to this grace, which is an objective assurance that your your sins are forgiven, mm -hmm. because the, the the priest or the bishop that you confess to on Saturday before you receive the Eucharist on Sunday has that priesthood granted him from a bishop, from a bishop, from a bishop, from a bishop, all the way back in time, mm -hmm. 2,000 years, to this collection of 10 men, because Thomas is, of course, absent at this point. Mm -hmm. um, so that grace that happened right there in those words, mm -hmm. that Holy Spirit exists and happens in every single confession when you go into church and that red light is on, you know that grace is happening there. Mm -hmm. And that's something that prepares you then to receive the Eucharist, which, as Jesus said, you know, mm -hmm. if you eat my flesh and drink eat my flesh and drink my blood, I will raise you up on the last day. So that 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 combination is what gets us is is grace that wears us in the best way possible, wiping away sin. That's powerful to me. Yes. Good. That's so powerful. I see it in my head. It looks like a chain of priests literally holding hands through time, mm -hmm. right? All the way back to this this day, this this room of 10 men and Jesus, every priest in our world is literally holding the hand of another priest who was in that room through time. It's a long time span thing. Mm -hmm. But that's pretty powerful. And it means a lot here. Like, I'm not talking, in our heads, we hold a lot of knowledge. Peter is like the king of all the knowledge, <laughs> and he's so good. But I also know, based on the words that I just heard, that it hits him right, right here-ish, too. I'm not, anatomy's also not my strong point. <laughs> but it hits us where we really, where we really feel. He's, we were chatting just a second ago, and he was talking about how in, it's in our hearts where the logic and the emotion and the knowledge and the feeling all kind of come together. Yeah. And that's so powerful. So very powerful. And maybe that's why Thomas was just in the knowledge, right? Mm -hmm. And that's why maybe he doubted. Because he was basically somewhat just in the knowledge that mm -hmm. how could he still be alive? What do you think of that, Debbie? What, what touches you on that? Well, I, I just, I love that Jesus answers Thomas. He, he answers the doubt. And I think that's true for all of us as well. So doubting honest doubting I think leads to honest questions and that leads to honest answers so you have a choice you can stay in your doubt and unbelief and not question and then you're just going to stay in unbelief or you can honestly question and honestly seek and I think Jesus will meet you where you are just like he met Thomas and and through grace again mm -hmm. through that grace show you so that you have your questions answered and you're not staying in that doubt and unbelief and I think we also need to be devoted to finding the answers and patient mm -hmm. because they don't always just come showering on us right away yeah and we know everything um, sometimes it takes a while um, yeah. to really work through having the humility to accept the answers um, even if you don't necessarily like the answers. Yeah. So what Debbie just told us, sorry to interrupt you, Kevin. what Debbie just told us and what Kevin and I firmly agree with is that it's okay to ask questions and it's okay to ask questions of everybody. That includes Father Gary, that includes every other priest. It's okay to be like, that doesn't make sense or I don't see what you see. But when we ask the questions, Debbie also said that we have to be open enough to receive the answer. So when the answer might not be what we want it to be, we have to be open enough to receive that answer, whether it's the one that we want, right? Yeah, and I think it also says that it's okay to doubt. Yeah. And even if you're doubting and you don't put it in words, God knows it anyway. Mm -hmm. So it's okay to kind of put it in words. But again, I think you have to call upon the Holy Spirit to help you um, grow in wisdom and understanding mm -hmm. and help ask Jesus to come alongside you with this um, particular problem. I think we also have to understand that there's some things we just won't, we just won't know the answers to. Mm -hmm. um, and it's okay to continue to search and, and try to figure those out, but we don't know everything and we won't, because if we did, then I guess we would be God, right? And mm -hmm. uh, we're not there. Yeah. So, um, 
Debbie, you talked a little bit. Um, so Thomas asked these questions, and you said Jesus answered. Why? Why is that powerful for you? I think just imagining myself in that situation, and I'm probably more of a skeptic, um, and I probably kind of hold back and want to know. Um, I don't just jump right in. Uh, so I think just kind of imagining myself in that situation and seeing how Jesus answers and doesn't condemn him, doesn't mm -hmm. say that's a stupid question or mm -hmm. why in the world? You've been with me all this time. How can you not know this? No, there's nothing, there's nothing in the way Jesus responds to Thomas that is insulting or demeaning, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. of course, of yes. course yeah. because it's Jesus, but I mean, and he answers. He doesn't mm -hmm. just leave him to go on his way without having his doubts put to rest, right? Yeah, and I think, Peter, the next part is also really important is Thomas asks these questions, very honest questions, right? Very questions like, I don't believe it. I don't believe it till I see it. Jesus answers the questions, and then, but then what does Thomas do? Peter, talk a little bit about that. Well, I think that um, what, what's important about the life of Thomas is he, he goes well into Asia Minor mm -hmm. after, after Pentecost. We know that I mean, he's given a, a certain grace here. Jesus comes back for him, mm -hmm. and he allows Thomas to touch and feel mm -hmm. in the same way we can touch and feel the grace of God in the sacraments. But Thomas ultimately travels into Asia, into Southern Asia, Southeast Asia, or into into India particularly, and he dies a martyr's death, as do ten of the eleven remaining disciples. Yeah. Which, um, you know, that that might not be the type of, you know, blessing we're looking for, but we are <laughs> promised that, I mean, part of Christ's promise is martyrs mm -hmm. are given an abundance in in heaven. Yeah. And and the crown of a martyr, um, I I. I hope someday to see Thomas's crown, mm -hmm. because he was touched in a way um, that, that, that made him super spectacular. He went into the far, dark corners of the earth, mm -hmm. spreading the good news, making churches, and, and the Sura Malabar Church, the St. Thomas Church, is a manifestation of this Thomas, the yeah. Darling Thomas. It's, it's beautiful to me to see that God uses us all, right? when we believe God uses us all. And like Peter said, we don't get to touch where Jesus, the, the nails went in. We don't get to touch Jesus's wounds. Um, but Peter said it really well when he said, we do get to touch that in the sacraments. In confession, when we go and we receive the sacrament of confession in the Eucharist, we get to, to touch that, to actually feel the grace that has come. That's absolutely true, um, Sage. But one thing we have that Thomas did not have mm -hmm. is the gift of the Holy Spirit. It's true. Um, because the gift of the Holy Spirit came on Pentecost um, days later after the ascension of Jesus. Mm -hmm. So we have the gift of the Holy Spirit now in our lives. With Thomas didn't have all the graces of the Holy Spirit at that time, but yet that's what he did. But we don't have an excuse because we can't stick a finger in uh, mm -hmm. Jesus' hands or side because, uh, quite frankly, we have the Holy Spirit, that power in us. If we just call upon mm -hmm. that. We can do, quite frankly, the same things I believe Thomas did. Well, yeah. if you if you look at the, the last portion of the uh, of the twentieth, or excuse me, twenty ninth verse, it's a promise of Christ. Mm -hmm. Blessed are those who have not seen, and have believed. So that's a promise for us believers. Yeah, that's us. I think that's beautiful. Blessed are those who have not seen, but who have believed. It's all of us, and I think that's a really great way to jump into our next week is to realize that. We haven't seen. None of us has physically touched Jesus' scars, Jesus' wounds. But yet we all believe and we all come together as a community of believers through tough times, good and bad, even though we're a little bit separated from those sacraments right now and we still continue to push forward and to realize that Jesus is risen and Jesus has saved us. He has promised us eternal life. Kevin, do you want to exit us with a prayer today? I would love to. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, amen. amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Amen. Happy second Sunday of Easter, and have a great week.